Good morning, church. We'd like to invite as many who would like to come out to the North X, where we're going to begin our Palm Sunday service. Please, if you're able, to come out and join us in the North X. started. I'll put a little bit more in there right before the gospel. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts to pen by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the holy city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the heavenly Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the great crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found an ass and sat upon it as it is written, Fear no more, O daughter Zion. See, your king comes, seated upon an ass's colt. His disciples did not understand this at first, but when Jesus had been glorified, they remembered that these things were written about him, and that they had done this for him. The Gospel of the Lord. You, and my dear sisters and brothers, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Please join in our opening hymn, number 143, all glory, laud, and honor, number 143. Hosanna's ring 
You are the King of Israel and David's royal son. Now in the Lord's name coming, our King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring, the company of angels are praising you on high, and mortals joined with all things created make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed this lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me, they mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Pray. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on its head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I might eat the Passover with my disciples. Then he will show you a large room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and said to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve. The one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. And they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your face shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. 
But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away secretly. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. And this they laid his hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard, and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We he heard him say, He I will, will destroy this temple made with the hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Rophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out of into the outer court, then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This, this man, man is, is one, one of them. them. 
Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystander said to Peter once more, Surely you are the one for them, for you two are Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do so for them, as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, Jews. and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon of Syrian, who was coming from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Uh Aha, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sakatani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on the reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a round clot and breathed his last breath. Please kneel. Please rise. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last breath, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, 
Mary, the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in the tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I never will forget the first time I presided as a priest during the Passion, and I had with me that day a very a new, newly minted server who was only about eight or nine years old. And I'll never forget when the Passion ended, he said loud enough for half the church to hear, Wow, that was long. <laughs> wow, that was long. In fact, that was 2000. 387 words. Thank you, Microsoft Word. 2,387 words to tell us the greatest love story ever told. Today I want to put forth three words, three actions, three verbs that can help us this week and all the way into the Easter season to keep our hearts and minds focused on what we just heard. Three words. Repent, relate, and receive. Repent, relate, and receive. First word is repent. Now, as you might remember, the very gospel we read of Mark begins way back in chapter 1 with the first words out of Jesus' mouth, and they are repent. Repent and believe the gospel. And so Lent began with that clarion call to turn ourselves away from our fear and to turn back to God's love. Now you'll notice that today we have the enemious job of having to play the chorus. And I myself also joined you in that because I am no doubt a part of the chorus, as we all are. And that chorus said some very unfortunate or difficult words. We said, crucify him, crucify him. And that should make us squirm in our seats a bit, as it is putting very plainly a point we might forget. In the narrative of the Passion, we are the bad guys. <laughs> We are Judas Iscariot, we are Peter, we are those who turned our back on the Lord. And you know, we say that Jesus died for the sins of the world, but this week, this holiest of weeks, I would challenge you to take it not so much Jesus died for our sins, but Jesus died for my sins for my selfishness, for my ego, for my anger. Jesus died for me and I am called and you are called to repent, which simply means to turn away from the fear that makes us say no and to turn toward God's love, which makes us say yes. First word, repent. Second word, relate. We must dare to connect Christ's suffering to our suffering, Christ's anguish to our anguish. I know most of us know well the Good Friday spiritual hymn, that great hymn where, where a Christian soul is asking all of humanity, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? 
But you know, there is another hymn that we sing. We cry it out. We sing it not so much with words, but we sing it inside our broken hearts. And it is a song we sing throughout our lives at points of time when we wonder, God, were you there when I faced my darkest hour? Were you there, Lord, when my spouse, my son, my friend died? Were you there, Lord, when the doctor said you have cancer? Were you there, Lord, when I was struggling with an addiction and being overcome by overdose? Were you there, Lord, when I was kidnapped, sold into slavery? Were you there, Lord, when my country was torn by war and violence? Were you there, Lord, when I was rejected, when I was bullied, when I was abused, when I was abandoned? And today we have God's eternal and unmistakable answer. Jesus was there. Jesus can relate to your pain and my pain because he suffered the greatest of pains. And if we would let the passion into our heart, we must relate it to our sufferings we're going through right now. And so I invite you all to think of a place where perhaps you're suffering and that seems undeserved, where you're experiencing pain and it seems senseless, or maybe you're undergoing a medical problem and you're worried and your heart's crying out with Jesus on the cross. The only words we hear today, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And realize that the Lord is right beside you. But there remains one last challenge that we must make if the passion is to be real. And that's the word receive. 2,387 words. And each sacred word invites us to accept, to embrace, to receive the most passionate love story ever told. The passion brings to mind the love a woman has for a husband, a husband for a wife, a mother for a child that great intense love, but you know, passionate love needs to be received. Otherwise, it's unrequited love. And the Lord wants us to receive his love. I never will forget back when the Mel Gibson came out with the passion of the Christ, and there were many commentaries written about the movie, but I went to see it on opening day, and I'll never forget the commentary that has always stayed in my mind. When I was in the theater, this two or three rows behind me, there was an African-American grandmother, and she had brought her eight or nine-year-old daughter to the theater. Now, we were all in a theater, but that woman was in church. <laughs> and as the movie began to play, it spoke so deeply to her heart, and I never will forget hearing her praying out loud. Jesus being whipped and scorned, and I heard her say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Jesus being spat upon and mocked, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Jesus carrying the cross up Calvary, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And then came the moment when they drove those cruel nails into his hands, and while he was writhing in pain, the woman turned to her daughter, granddaughter, and she said words that half the theater could hear. She said, oh, Oh, honey child, look how much Jesus loves you. On this Passion Sunday and during this Holy Week, may we receive that word from that wise grandmother. Let us hear the voice of Jesus saying, even in a whisper, see how much I forgive you. See how much I ache to be with you in your pain. Hear Jesus say, hanging from the cross, Oh, honey child, see how much I love you. Amen. Now I'd like to ask you to turn to page 10 in your missalettes. 
During the Lenten and Easter season, we are encouraged to pray the most ancient of our creeds. And so on page 10, we can pray together the Apostles' Creed, which will be used for our catechumens to come into the church on Holy Saturday. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the suffering and death of Christ, we see God's boundless love for us. So with confidence, we pray for the church that we may join Christ in letting go of control and power and allow the Spirit of God to sustain and renew us each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive, that we may have the courage to forgive freely all who injure us just as God has forgiven us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For single-heartedness, that God will keep us and trust every aspect of our lives into God's hands, and grow in our desire that God's will be done in all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, particularly Christians being persecuted for living the gospel, that God will sustain them and help them to give faithful witness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the elect and candidates, that God will deepen their desire for the Eucharist and fill them with love through the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions listed in the Book of Intentions, those who have passed away, and in a special way we remember Anna M. and Elwood Banks, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us ask our Blessed Mother to walk with us to Calvary and to the Easter Sunday as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As the gifts in the altar are being prepared, we raise our voices and sing hymn number 154. O sacred head surrounded, number 154.
pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name. For the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Anna and Elwood, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Bernard, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your most holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And let us offer each other some sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. As we share in the body and blood of Christ, we sing hymn number 339. 
The Supper of the Lord, number 339. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is poured. Come share the supper of the Lord. This is the bread of God coming down from heaven, giving life to us, to all the Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is poured. Come share the supper of the Lord. I am the living spring of eternal life. You that drink from me shall not thirst again. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is poured. Come share the supper of the Lord. I am the bread of heaven, giving life to you. You that eat this bread shall never die. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is poured. Come share the supper of the
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us hope for what we believe, by so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements for this morning. Please join the Indiana Catholic community for Holy Week. The schedule is as follows. On Thursday, March 28th, will be the Chrism Mass at 10 a.m. at Blessed Sacrament Cathedral. At 7 p.m. on March on Holy Thursday, will be the Mass of the Lord's Supper here at St. Bernard of Clairvaux Parish. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament will begin immediately after the Holy Thursday Mass until midnight. On Good Friday, at 12 p.m. here will be Stations of the Cross, and at 3 p.m. here and at St. Thomas More will be the Good Friday Liturgy. At 8 p.m. here will be the Tenebrae of Jesus' Seven Last Words. And on Holy Saturday, the Easter Basket Blessing will be at St. Thomas More Parish at 12 noon, and the Easter Vigil Mass will be at 8 p.m. here at St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Please bow your head for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now and announce the gospel of the Lord. As we take God's love into the world this week, join us in singing hymn number 413, Jesus Remember Me, number 413. Oh. Uh...